Hi, I'm Father Joel, and welcome to Pilgrim Priest. As we say goodbye to July and hello to August, I just wanted to say thank you to all of our mission partners who make monthly donations through patreon.com slash pilgrimpriest and help make sure this is free for everyone. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Solomon has just recently been king, uh, become king of Israel. He succeeds his father David as the king, and he's really quite young, and he's very aware of his youth. He feels inadequate. One night, the Lord appears to him in a dream and says, ask for whatever you want. Imagine for a moment God appearing to you in a dream and saying, you can have whatever you want. What would you ask for? Would you ask for success in sports? Would you ask to be the popular kid in school? Would you ask for a successful job, for the gift of being independently wealthy? Would you ask that everything that you do uh, become successful? Maybe you'd be like King Midas and want everything you touch to turn to gold, which in the story of Midas, it turns out that his daughter comes running out to meet him, and he touches her, and she also turns to gold. It's a beautiful little commentary on what we value and what really matters. King Solomon asks for wisdom. He asks for a wise and understanding heart, not for any of the things that most of us would have thought. So God responds saying, well, well done, well said. You well And he goes on to say, because you've asked for wisdom and not for success in battle or wealth or honor, uh, I'll give you not only wisdom, but all these other things as well. A beautiful little reminder from Scripture that if we do the thing that really matters, the other things fall into place. What exactly is wisdom? Wisdom is more than just intelligence. It's more than just knowing things. Nowadays, it seems to me that we have access to all kinds of information. You know, in the old days, if you wanted to look something up, you would have had to go to the library, get out the card catalog, figure out where the book was, get the book off the shelf, look in the index, figure out where the information was in the book, leaf through the book, maybe several books until you finally found the piece of information you were looking for. Nowadays, we drop something into Google, click on the first thing, and think we're done. We have so much access to information. But it seems to me that our culture has gotten less good at becoming wise. You know, many cultures have revered elders for their wisdom and trusted elders to become wise so that they could then provide wise guidance for the community. But I'm not sure that our elders are becoming wise and old at the same time. And I'm also, it doesn't seem to me that young folks will sit and listen to the elders and receive wisdom. We're not collecting it. We're not passing it on. Perhaps because the world looked very different when our elders were growing up and the wisdom they received no longer seems to work, no longer seems up to the task of guiding the community. But I would suggest to you that as things change and shift, that wisdom is even more important now than it has ever been in history. What is wisdom? Wisdom is that ability to look underneath the surface. It's not just to see what's going on around you, but to understand what stands underneath. What's going on in the hearts of people? What's going on? What's not being said? How does the world work? Um, An example of sort of ordinary world wisdom, a reporter was talking to a Chinese peasant, and there had recently been some uprising in a region in China, and of course the Chinese official state media, which controls all the information, officially stated that there was nothing going on in this region. There was no uprising. There was, it was, everything was calm. So the peasant responded, well, of course there's something going on. If there were nothing going on, why would they have told us there was nothing going on? That's wisdom. He knows enough about human nature. He knows enough about how the world works. He knows enough about his government to realize that if they tell you nothing's going on, there's probably something going on. 
give you another example of wisdom. I was at the county fair on Thursday night and got stuck in the stock barn as the severe weather went through. Seemed like a relatively safe place. One of the, uh, there was a little group of us kind of stuck there chatting while we waited for the rain to go down. The one woman said, well, I was going to bring an umbrella, but my husband told me to leave it in the car. And the other wife said, yeah, I had a raincoat all ready to go. And my husband said, you're not going to need that. That's not wisdom. Everybody knows if you hold an umbrella, it never rains. It's like the universe sees you're prepared and skips you that time. It only rains when you leave the umbrella in your car or at home. I'm just kidding. But anyway, so wisdom, how can we become more wise? I think the last few years I've, I've become a little wiser and it's not so much because I'm getting gray hairs at an increasingly alarming rate, though those two things may be connected. Um, but a few years ago, I was taking stock of my life and I realized that I would trust my own judgment, but more often than not, the decision I would make would have turned out to be not have been necessarily the right one. And, it, and I'm not talking about big things, I'm talking about little things, I'm talking about everyday life, I'm talking about going to bed on time, eating healthy meals, exercising regularly, like just organizing my private life. I would, in many cases, know what the right thing to do would be, but then choose the wrong thing, and then later regret it and tell myself, you need to, you need to make a better choice next time. But I would then repeat the same mistake again. And I would realize, I'm not very wise. What's missing here? And I started to pray and search for a deeper understanding of what was going on behind my reactions, behind my decisions, behind my actions. What was it that was actually feeding me or driving me down this road that wasn't the wisest place to go? And getting a deeper understanding of what was going on inside of me helped me to find, to address those things and then be able to choose a better path more consistently. This is exactly the point that the Bible is making about wisdom. We begin to become wise when we're willing to admit that we aren't wise. When we're willing to admit that we need help, that we don't have the answers, that my best judgment is often wrong, that I need to seek wisdom from other people or from other sources outside of myself. This is precisely where Solomon starts his journey of wisdom. And it's unfortunate, I think, why so many of us don't get on this journey of wisdom because we're not willing to admit that I don't know, that I don't have the answers, that I need guidance and help. Solomon asks for help and he receives the gift of a wise and understanding heart. I think that's a gift that all of us could use, but how many of us ask for it? Perhaps at Mass today it might be helpful to ask the Lord for a wise and understanding heart, to begin to realize that I don't have it all figured out. And I should turn to wise people. I should turn to the church's beautiful tradition of, of teachings. I should turn to prayer and scripture and begin to search for wisdom. So that's the first thing I would say is, is realizing that we need it is a great place to start on the journey of wisdom. The second thing that I would say is that in our, our gospel reading, we see this guy who's found a field with treasure in it. And so he's willing to sell everything in order to buy that field. So then afterwards, of course, he can dig up the treasure and make back what he expended and more. And so the second thing I would say is that what's true treasure? What is true treasure? We often, you know, pursue things that don't turn out to be satisfying. We often set as goals or targets stuff that ends up disappointing us. And so I think it's worth, as in the pursuit of wisdom, being honest with ourselves about where have I found real treasure? What truly blesses my life? And, and to pursue things that are lastingly important. That's the point of the story of Midas, is that things turning to gold isn't as valuable as his family and friends around him, and yet he sort of trades them for gold. He loves gold too much. Do we love true treasure? Is our heart set on the things that really matter? Or do we find ourselves often pursuing um, things that aren't treasure? 
So then the third thing we see is that um, the kingdom of heaven is like sorting out fish, right? The good from the bad. Maybe it's the fish and the old boot that came up in the net. In a similar way, I think that we need to take stock of our lives. We need to look at the things we've collected, both materially, literally, but also emotionally, and sort through them. Keep the things that really matter. Keep the good things. Keep the treasure. Let go of the rest. Let go of the things that don't truly matter. That process of stepping back and looking and sorting. The last thing that seems to be, uh, you know, the end goal of wisdom is that God himself is deeply wise and the way that he has ordered the world is very wise. Hopefully the way that you've ordered your home, hopefully the way you order your schedule is also wise, but that's a way that we, we have given this gift to be able to participate in God's wisdom. Wisdom is most fundamentally seeing things as God sees them because God has the most accurate perspective. Wisdom is most fundamentally loving the things that God loves because those are the things that are valuable. And so when we ask for wisdom, what we're truly asking for is to be close to God, to see things as God sees them, to love with the heart of God. And so part of that journey of wisdom is to draw close to God and to allow God to reveal to us how he sees things, how he values them. When he reveals this to St. Paul, as we hear in our second reading, Paul realizes that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Paul begins to realize, you know those wonderful things that just worked out and fell into place? That was God taking care of me. And you know those terrible things that didn't turn out the way I thought they were, that ended up feeling like a disaster? That was also God. That was also God wanting to bless me in a different way, perhaps in a deeper way. And so Paul can realize that everything that God has given him is a blessing. Some of the blessings feel like blessings, but perhaps the ones that don't feel like blessings are even bigger blessings because they're opportunities to to put down deeper roots, to grow closer to God, to begin to see God's work present even in suffering and in difficulties, and in doing so to begin to value more deeply what God values and to let go of some of the things that appear to be treasure, but don't have lasting value. That's the wisdom that St. Paul has gotten to by admitting that he's not wise, by seeking true treasure, by sorting through the things in his life, and ultimately, by drawing close to God. Let's pray for a wise and understanding heart at Mass today. This past week I made it out to Tim's Hill, the uh, highest point in Wisconsin, so I was uh, proud to check that off my bucket list, but it's been all downhill since then.